So today I'm going to share a method to perform a color filament change on your printer. This may be useful if the script in Cura for filament change doesn't work. This will work whether you have a Bowden tube with a filament extruder drive or if you have a direct drive. All right, so here's what you're gonna to need today. You're gonna to need a pair of long nose needle pliers and that's going to be for cleaning the tip between layer changes. You want to make sure that right before it engages the next layer that you clean off that tip. The next thing that you're gonna need is you're going to need a free piece of software called Notepad++. It's a free download, very, very simple to use. And I promise you that the G code that we're going to add is very, very simple to implement. You're also going to need an SD card and the adapter to be able to load that piece of G code onto the SD card and then load it into the printer. The, the next thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a piece of paper because I like to place a piece of paper over top of my print while I'm changing the filament. And that's to ensure that I don't end up with any hot filament on top of my print. It's just a precaution. Uh, we are going to be performing a retraction between layer changes to try to avoid this. But like I said, just a precaution. All right, so the first thing that I want you to do is to download and install a program called Notepad++. It's a free program, easy to install and easy to use. I'll show you how to add the G code to your sliced file shortly. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to open up whatever version of Cura that you're running and you can go ahead and slice your model however you want. You will come over here to the preview and you're going to have a look and decide which layer it is that you want to create your filament change. So just a word of warning that although uh, the number over here says one what you're seeing right now is layer zero. And then as you're going to move this up, the layers are going to change. So keep that in mind when you go to place the code into uh, the G code file. So next I want you to open Notepad++. So here we go. I'm going to open up the file that we just saved. I put mine onto my uh, SD card and it's right here. Uh, just an FYI, G4 stands for the pause command. That's what we're going to use in order to be able to give us some time to change the filament. So you're going to come up to the search here and you're going to go find and we're going to search for layers. So we're finding the next. So there's layer zero. So in Cura, this is actually layer one. And so I want to change just before we go to layer two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this up over here and I'm going to place my cursor right after this time elapsed and I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to paste the code that I put in the description and then I'm going to walk you through exactly what these lines say. So it's these lines that I've just cut and pasted into the code right after the time elapsed, right before we start layer two. So just as an FYI, after the printer has completed a layer, this line right here, Z 0.6 is positioning the print head prepared for the next layer it's going to print. Okay, this G1 command is I'm telling the extruder to retract the filament. So that's a negative in front of that 7.0 at a speed of F1500. You can adjust this uh, depending upon whether you're using a Bowden tube or a direct drive print head. So anything after this symbol is just a note. It doesn't impact the code as it's being executed. I'm just putting a note here to let you know that I'm retracting the filament as soon as I've finished the previous layer. 
because I don't want the print head to be oozing while I'm raising the print head away from the print. The next uh, line here is I'm now moving the Z axis to uh, 50 millimeters above the print bed and I'm doing it at a speed of F300. You can change this speed. I recommend that you experiment and test it for yourself. And again, the symbol and the note that this is raising the Z axis and to the position of 50 millimeters above the print bed. The next item that I have here is G4 and G4 is the pause. And then the S is setting the amount of time that we're going to be paused. And this is the window of opportunity that you have to be able to remove the filament and then get the filament back into position. So those of you with a Bowden tube, you're going to be wanting to be loading the filament, pinching the grippers that will release the uh, tension onto the extruder and push your filament forward to the hot end. The hot end, while it's in pause mode, will remain hot. So don't be concerned. Those of you who have a direct drive, you're going to want to load your filament and make sure that the filament has tension on the extruder gear because the next line here is I am going to be forcing uh, 50 millimeters of filament. So I'm making a movement. I'm going to activate the extruder for 50 millimeters at a speed of F300 and I'm locking in the position at Z50 because while you're manipulating the filament, I don't want you to interfere with the positioning. The next line here is G0, Z0.6, F300. So I'm lowering the Z axis back into position to be able to resume printing. So just a reminder that this is the position that you saw here. So I'm doing this right before I'm going to be printing layer two, which is actually layer three in Cura. So I want to make sure that I've got this print head back in the correct position. I did not add code here for being able to shift the X or the Y axis because this is generic. Depending upon the size of your printer, uh, I could be repositioning where it could have a negative impact. So if you want to be able to move the uh, X and Y axis to get the nozzle uh, away from being over top of your print, you can add that. But just remember that you have to add the reverse positioning to be able to put it back where it came from. And honestly, I think you'll do just fine here. If you want to uh, raise it more than this, just go ahead and change it from 50 to 100. Really depends upon your printer and how high it can go. And remember that this is 50 millimeters above the bed. It is not 50 millimeters above the layer that you're changing from. Okay, so keep that in mind. Save this code in a convenient location, making sure that whatever you name it, that you save it as .g code. If you just go and hit save as without specifying that it's .g code, it'll save it as a text file. No big deal, but it's just a, a reminder to do it. Now you'll load the file onto your SD card and test it out. Just making sure to let you know that you'll be testing this at your own risk. Whenever I am testing something new, I am always near the printer. I'm ready to hit the off switch if I need to for whatever reason. All right, so now let's check out the results. I basically printed a very, very thin layer of yellow on the bottom and then a little bit thicker layer of red on the top and you can see that the seam there is pretty straight and clean and the top finish looks good. And if we look for the point uh, where I resumed, uh, it's kind of difficult to find. So the spot where I resumed, well, I'm not sure anymore. Oh, I think it's right there. There's a teeny tiny mark right there where you can see where the resume was. So just a reminder, use those needle nose pliers 
to make sure to clean the end of the nozzle right before it touches down to start to print again and you'll end up with a nice clean uh, connection like this so try it out and let me know uh, how it works out for you if you're interested there's going to be a video that's going to be posted relating to how to get the z offset dialed in really well and get good adhesion on the bed and it's a little technique that i like to use anyways it's up above check it out thanks for watching happy printing